Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 333 with the last match for tonight's stream, and it is going to be El Torero versus Gorda on Baron. So, a bit of a higher level match than the last two, though the last two were at least by ELO values fairly high level matches, but they were weird. I mean, first we have Shield versus Cloakie, where it was just Shield runs over Cloakie, and then we have Scythe versus. Like, Cloakies have Scythes. We've learned now that Cloakiebot does indeed have the scythe as part of its factory. That is a lesson to learn. Because that last game certainly taught us that lesson if we hadn't known it already. And I mean, it did pretty well. It just didn't do as well as it could have. There were some execution problems with, with the way Scythe's reason in that game, but now we have Baron between Golda and El Torero, which is sure to be bizarre because it's Golda, who is in fact starting with Jumpbot Factory, which isn't actually that bizarre anymore. Jumpbot Factory's been buffed to the point where it's pretty viable. Like, it's not a cheese factory as it used to be. Some people still kind of joke that you have to basically destroy your opponent's base in the first two minutes in order to win with Jumpbot Factory. And we have seen that happen. We have seen that player win. But I don't know. They are pretty strong. Anyway, cool to starting out with early Pyro. Pretty typical start for Jumpbot Factory. People don't typically start with early Puppy. I mean, against Cloaky, if you know your opponent's probably going to go Cloaky, it's not a terrible idea. But if your opponent goes Shields... Those early puppies are pretty much just waiting for a reclaim field. Or a wreckage field, to be more precise. They can't take on map reclaim. And Pyro, a bit more reliable. Handles the Shieldbot matchup a little bit better. Now, I mean, Golden, now that they know it's a Cloakybot matchup, is going straight for the puppies. Like, not quite repeat build puppy, but they are going straight for puppy, because they can. Because it's the Cloakybot matchup, and that's what you do. Because puppies one-shot Glaives, and Glaives really have a hard time dealing with puppies. You can, if you do really finicky retreat micro, win in a Glaive versus Puppy fight as the Glaive controller. But it's tough. The Puppy has an advantage. But yeah, like I said, early on you're not sure. Are they going for Glaives? Are they going for Bandits? Are they going for... I mean, on this map, it's probably not going to be Vehicles. I don't think Vehicles can work on this map. But it's like, what factory are you going to use? If it's a Shield matchup, you don't want to go for Puppies. If it's a Cloaky matchup, you do. The wise choice there by Gorda. And unwise choice there by El Torero's defender there, hitting its own Lotus. Or hitting their own Lotus. But, ooh, nice tick. I mean, that I thought that tick would missed, but apparently it didn't. Apparently it was close enough. And apparently this giant thing is tick wreckage. I'm not sure about that. That's a big tick. Considerably larger than the unit in question. That must that's probably a wreckage bug. Anyway, weird things that weirder things have happened. There are also bugs. Yeah, Golda. Okay, so just puppies on patrol, not really worrying about That sounds like a name of a kid show. <laughs> well they are on patrol. They are they are puppies and they are currently issuing being issued patrol orders. So that statement is accurate. So that's all they're used for. A bit surprised. I would have expected they would have been a bit more forward. Like dealing with at least forward defense, you know, dealing with glaives as they go around, making sure the glaives can't deal with expansions. Though, at the same time, this pyro is in the way. That does help. And Gwoda's come... Oh, unable to kill it. One HP left, but still unable to kill it. Nice juking around by El Torero there. Just keeping the thing alive. Now, at this point, nine glaives compared to two pyros, and the puppies are purely on defense, so we don't even want to count them. And that second Pyro in production, so really one Pyro against nine Glaives. If these Glaives all hit at once, that is... Well, that's a win for the Glaives. They will win that fight. Don't worry, they, they will... I mean, okay, it's possible they'll lose. But at this level of play, they'll be... They'll be used well enough. Okay, with the Tick available, no, that's... That's it. And Golda, do they know about the Tick? They do know about the Tick. They have spotted it out, and nice jump trying to kill it. Good moves there. Because that Tick were to blow up... Due to that pyro, that pyro could very easily be stunned. Gorda knows that, Gorda dealt with it. And at this point, still a few too many. Well, nice. Remove the tick and pretty much push the glaze out of the way. So that's El Torero not be able to do anything right now. And Gorda getting slightly ahead. El Torero just setting up. Are they going to take the north? I don't know. That's going to be tricky. Gorda has their sights clearly set in the south here. But they also aren't moving that quickly to it. El Torero, on the other hand, they don't have as much of an army to deal with this. Especially if that last that last fight was pretty big. They lost a tick, 
That tick was supposed to kill a pyro. Like, it was supposed to stun a pyro so the remaining glaives could kill it, and it failed to do so. Golda spotted it in time, Golda targeted it, Golda, Golda got out of the way, just, it was... That was a mess. And at this point, these pyros are gonna come in. They're posing a pretty big threat to El Torado's commander right now. If they were to go south from here, they would be a major problem. But it looks like Golda doesn't want to risk it too much, doesn't want to push in. But I'm serious, if they hit this, that would... Okay, right now, not so much with that... With this Lotus here, not quite. It's not quite as bad, but when it was just one Lotus, there was a bit of a timing there, which Golda wasn't aware of, so cut them some slack. Cut them some slack, they did not know. But still, it's one of those things that, had they done it, never will happen again, but had they done it, it would have been a good timing. Anyway, El Torero is going to have to deal with this, but nice, they have a tick already set up. How many ticks do they have right now? This is it. This is the only tick they have on the map right now, and that tick will probably not go off. Oh, no, no, it's not going to go off. These pyros are going to be able to take care of it. Although, one of them... Oh, nice! Does stun out one of them. Forcing Golda back into a fight they probably don't want to engage in. Getting rid of one, two pyros. Is the third pyro going to go down too? That third pyro is... That's taking a lot of damage. I don't see it's... No. Very close, though. And that was for, what, five glaives and a tick? Not a terrible trade, but at this point, Golda is still ahead. El Torero has, however, gone to the Zeus... Natural counter, there we go, got that built up. But still very nice tick and glaive usage there, getting rid of a couple pyros. Ah, if they got rid of this one though, I would definitely call it worthwhile. But because they only got rid of two, it's not even quite an even trade. I think I think El Torero is slightly behind because of that. On the other end though, that, I mean, what are they going to do? The pyros were assaulting. Pretty good defense though, at least. Got rid of that. Seriously, what's with the tick model? This is a strange looking tick. Probably submit that as a bug. Anyway, Tick Wreckage has gotten messed up. Might want to check out the model used. And this Pyro, is it going to go down? I don't think it will. Golda, well aware of these coming in. They they know. I mean, they have radar coverage of everything. El Torero actually way behind on radar coverage. But never mind that. We'll deal with that in a moment. What matters now is these Zeus is here. And how is it going to work? I mean, Pyro is typically used to Zeus. And this one hasn't even been repaired. It's... Well, and it pays for it. So like we said, unfortunately did not move that Zeus out of the way in time, burning to death, but at the same time, there is a lot of damage to go around here. Most of that being dealt to the Zeus. Zeus's. Two, okay, that was not worth it. That was really not worth it. El Torero just dug their own grave with that fight. Two Zeus going down for, what, one Lotus and one Pyro? Damaged Pyro at that? Like, not worth it. Now the moderators are up. This is not going to work out nicely. And Torero's commander going over here. Torero, El Torero is going to be just not doing well at all. I mean, those Zeus were pretty unnecessary. Just lost the third. There it goes. And these slaves don't really have an opening. The Pyros would roast them if they did. That, however, these... Actually, they're overextending. These moderators are overextending slightly. And El Torero does know it. Or do they know it? I'm not sure. Yes, they do. They know that there are moderators. They know where they are positioned. They're no longer overextended, though. That was a very short timing window. But they were, for a short period, overextending themselves, which would have been very dangerous thanks to these glaives here. But it would have been suicide for the glaives. Like, they might, they would have been able to kill them at the cost of their own lives. Still, for three moderators? That's like 900 metal. No, 720 metal, sorry. Still, 720 metal for the cost of, like, 300? 325? Yeah. That would have helped. Gorda's commander going in for... Are they going for the kill? That can't be right. Oh yeah, the Glaives are going to stop it with the ride cannon, but still that... At this stage in the game, are... You know what? They might be able to. I mean, the four moderators coming in, Zeus is being the only things in the way. The Glaives aren't a threat, not with the riot cannon. Yeah, this could be it. Gorda could just be going in for the kill. And they're not going to bother with the side section here. The side section's got nothing, really. It's got like 2.4 metal, that's it. No, 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 no. Go for the main base. Finish it off. Golda knows they have enough of an advantage they can do this. <laughs> Just streaming out pyros because why not? So that was a rather short game. I mean, that, that one fight right here, that really just decided it. So, I mean, up here too. Both both up here, like, losing that tick early and this here. This fight here, that was at best even trade. El Torero didn't really gain any ground or regain any ground as a result of that. And... 
Possibly to the late with a sharpshooter. There's so many mod raiders here. Mod raiders not kiting though. Golda, what are you doing? You know, you know to kite this. Lost three mod raiders for no good reason, but still, that's not enough. El Torero maybe gained a little bit of ground as a result of that. And, and Golda's commander's going down. But otherwise, it's not going to help. So much damage has been dealt to El Torero right now. Like, Golda can just, they'll be rushing in with how many powers? Like, they've got. Like, a pyro coming in every three seconds. This is game. Like, Golda just took this. I think, really, the biggest thing that did it was this fight with the Tick. Because the Tick got spotted, it didn't... If it had burrowed just a little bit further down the ramp, it wouldn't have been spotted. Golda would have just rushed in. They would have lost their pyro, gotten it stunned, and then the Glaze would have killed it. That would have been a huge deal, because at the time, there was, like, I think, maybe one more pyro. So, like, one Glaze would have died to this defender... And then the rest of them would have probably killed the pyro. And then would have had free reign up to the main base. If they didn't attack the factory, the two puppies didn't get in their way. They could have ripped apart a lot. They could have really pushed Gulda back. But unfortunately, that tick did get spotted out. And then, of course, the Zeus's did nothing. Like, El Torero just ran into a heavily defended position with three Zeus that didn't have any... I mean, no speed. And the moderator is getting built up right then, too. But that, at that point, it was already in Gulda's favor. So anyway, that is it for me tonight. That is it for the Nanolay of the Dawn cast. This has been Shadow Fury 333, and that's that's it. So have a good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>